Mark, thanks for your company. Seeing what's going on in Europe right now, do you reckon that this is a, a real wake up call in your saying, how hey, folks smell the coffee and spend more on defence? Yeah, yes, Darren, I do. Uh, my father, Reginald Francois, was a was a D-Day veteran. Very proud of that. So I've always agreed with that old maxim, defence is the first duty of government. So I serve on the House of Commons Defence Committee. We've been saying for quite a while, for some years now, that we should spend about 3% of our gross domestic product on defence. At the moment, we spend about 2.3. Our, our unofficial motto, if you like, was three to keep us free. So, yes, I do believe, and so do my fellow members on the committee, it's an all-party committee, that defence spending should rise. Yeah. What do you think, where are areas where the Chancellor could actually find a little bit of leeway in your, I don't want you to sort of take out the, the Treasury's spend and review right now, but where are areas where you reckon, because we read stories, Mark, all the time about things that the NHS are doing, spending on money on diversity and inclusion managers, and taxpayers are rightly thinking, they're taking the mix slightly. Well, look, the first thing we need to do is look to our own within defence itself. So the first question we have to ask is the money we're already allocating defence, is that well spent? And I regret to tell you the answer in many cases is no. The All-Party Public Accounts Committee, which I also serve on, concluded last November their words that the UK's defence procurement system is, I quote, broken. Mm. Of the 36 biggest defence procurement programmes in the Ministry of Defence, not a single one, not one, is running on track in terms of both time and budget. So the first thing we have to do, before we try and take money from any other department or ask for a tax rise, is to make sure that we're spending the MOD's budget effectively. Yeah. The system, I'm afraid, is broken. I don't mean to worry your viewers, but that's the brutal truth. So the first thing we've got to do is to completely review how we buy our military equipment and fix that system so, if you like, we get more bang for the buck. We've got to get that right, and then if we do put more money into defence, Hopefully, we will get more bang for the buck for that too. But the MOD needs to look, to, you know, to take the plank out of its own eye, Darren. Mark, as you well know, in 2010, there were, of course, those cuts to the size of the armed forces. Do you now look back at that and think, God, the Cameron government was naive in the extreme to think that what we're seeing in Ukraine wouldn't happen in the modern warfare age? <laughs> Well, uh, I'm one of those who's always been rather hawkish about Russia. But, Darren, let's be honest, in 2010, when that government came into office, Gordon Brown had almost bankrupted the country. So there had to be some very painful choices. It was just financially inevitable. Where I think we've gone wrong is we've continued, for instance, a process of reducing the size of the British Army. We've, we had something a year ago called the Integrated Review which wanted to reduce the British Army from 82,000 regulars to 73,000. Some of us on the Defence Committee at the time said that was pretty daft. Well, now to do that in light of Ukraine would be completely bonkers. So the first thing we've got to do is to reverse that cut completely. Look, if we're dealing with Vladimir Putin and the people around him, you know, these are mainly ex-Soviet KGB or GRU intelligence officers. These are not softies. These are ruthless people. And they're running a government and an army that is prepared to shell civilians randomly, which is why we had that tragedy in Mariupol recently, where they struck a maternity hospital. 